is going on y'all five sports talk back at it with another video talking some nfl and as you can see on the board behind me it is time to talk about my week four picks and predictions so i'm gonna go through every single game on the board here and give you guys my pick and prediction for every single game straight up and also versus the spread. So hopefully can make you guys a little bit of money. But before I do get started, if you are new to the channel, make sure to go ahead and subscribe, folks, because I do post a lot of NFL content and these videos are weekly, so you don't want to miss that out. And if you don't want to miss that out, hit the bell icon to be notified every time I drop a new video. And guys, while you're at it, follow me on my social media. Links down below on the stream, Twitter, Instagram, all that good stuff. Hit me up on there. With that being said, let's get started. So as always, I start with full transparency of how I did last week. So last week was a decent week. Um, nothing great in terms of against the spread. Straight up, I went 12-3-1. So 12 uh, games predicted correctly, 3 incorrect, and 1 tie, which I hate ties. But again, here we are. We're going to have to account for this damn tie the entire season. Um, that was the, the Eagles and the um, Bengals game. And uh, so this was straight up. But against the spread, wasn't that great. 7-8-1 against the spread. So again, uh, hoping for a better week this week. Still decent, but I expect more. So what does that bring my record through in two weeks? Excuse me, four weeks. Or three weeks, I should say. Boy, I'm getting my numbers mixed up here. Um in three weeks, uh, I am 38, 9, and 1, straight up, and 29, 18, and 1, versus the spread. So still solid and chugging along here, and hopefully this week is a very good week, so you guys are going to want to stay tuned for all my picks. So just for full transparency there and disclosure, now let's talk about the All picks. right, let's go ahead and get started with the Thursday night game. And folks, we've got another garbage matchup this week on Thursday night football. I don't know who in the NFL offices are scheduling these Thursday night games, but they need to be fired immediately because why are we being forced to watch the damn Jets and the Broncos on Thursday night football? It is just absolutely pathetic. And I'm tired of it after we had to watch the Dolphins and the Jaguars last week. So again... Another trash Thursday night football game. But again, I have to make my pick. And if I have to make my pick, the line here set in uh, favor of the Broncos. Minus two at the time of this recording. And folks, I don't get it. But I'm going to go with the Jets here. Jets to win this game. Because here's the thing. The Jets are pathetic. They're awful. And they're just an absolute embarrassment. But the Broncos are in the same boat right now with the amount of injuries that they're dealing with. I mean, my goodness, they lost their starting um, quarterback in Drew Locke. They lost their starting wide receiver, their best wide receiver in Cortland Sun. We know they lost Von Miller. I mean, just injuries everywhere on this football team for the Broncos. And they're going to be starting Brett Ripien as their starting quarterback. I don't even know if I'm saying his name right, but they're starting him. And I don't know why they're favored here. This should be a pick at this point because both teams are garbage. But if the betters are going to say... The Broncos are fair. Give me the Jets here. You know, the Jets have had a pretty tough schedule so far, uh, you know, in terms of who they played. And so you're getting a you, the worst matchup thus far in terms of, you know, who you've played. And so this is the worst team. And so the Jets, I believe, have a legitimate chance here to win this game because at least they have a starting caliber quarterback thus far, I guess I should say, and Sam Darnold. And the problem with the Jets is Adam Gase is awful. He needs to be fired immediately. And I know Jets fans are waiting on that. I hear you, Jet fans. I agree with you. Adam Gase needs to go. As far as who's going to play for the Jets this game, I, I don't think Le'Veon Bell is going to be back. So it'll be another dose of 80-year-old uh, Frank Gore. Uh, you got Chris Herden in. I don't know if Crowder is going to be back. But, folks, it's going to be a low-scoring game. I'd hammer the under. And uh, I'm going to go with the Jets. I, I think they just have more talent at this point, which is saying something because both teams are so devoid of talent. So give me... The Jets here um, as the underdogs to, to straight up win this game. All right, moving on to the Sunday games. We've got the Colts and the Bears. And folks, for the life of me, I can't figure out why the Bears keep getting disrespected. This team is 3-0. 3-0 now. And they still can't get favored. And this Colts team, which 
you know, has the number one defense. And I put that in air quotes because they played the damn Jets. They played the Jaguars, uh, you know, and they've played these these bad offenses. And so to say that you have the number one defense doesn't really hold a lot of weight. And so I think the Colts are decent, nothing great. And I absolutely think the Bears can beat them. And you better believe with the line in favor of the Colts minus three and, and as a road team, I know it doesn't really matter as well uh, as much this season with no fans, uh, but give me the Bears all day, especially um, to cover. But I'm picking the Bears outright to win this game. We know they they um, uh, changed their quarterbacks now to Nick Foles. Uh, I believe that could be an upgrade for the Bears, uh, you know, depending on if it opens up the offense for Matt Nagy in terms of what he can do with the playbook. Um, and then we know that defensively, this Bears team, even though they have underperformed thus far their defense, they should be able to pick up steam, put a little pressure on Phillip Rivers, and he's going to fold like a cheap tent. All right, so I'm going to take the Bears here, folks. Again, I don't understand the disrespect by the betting, but by the betters, but I'll take what I can get here. All right, moving on to the Saints and the Lions. And, folks, I'm going to take the Saints straight up here to win this game. I don't know if Michael Thomas is going to be back, but they should be ha- able to handle uh, the Lions, the the lowly Detroit Lions, even though I know they picked up a, a victory against the Cardinals last week, which I didn't expect them to, but props to the Detroit Lions. The line is minus four in favor of uh, the Saints. And if it was where we knew Michael Thomas was back, I'd be hammering that. But right now we don't know. But it's still too low of a spread here. If it was like six or seven, I, I take the, the Lions. But give me the Saints to cover this four. Um, four four point spread. All right. Uh, again, they're just a better team here. The Lions are not very good. I'm moving on to the Cardinals at the Panthers. Now the Panthers ruined a lot of my parlays last week because they pulled off the damn upset <laughs> against the Chargers. Um, and I don't know how the Chargers couldn't stop the damn Panthers without Christian McCaffrey, but that's where we are, and that's why the NFL is so unpredictable. Uh, but they play the Cardinals this week. The Cardinals are three and a half point favorites, and I'm going to take the Cardinals to win this game. They're just a better team uh, with Kyler Murray, with DeAndre Hopkins, with Kenny Drake. I know last week they underperformed against the Lions, but I believe they should be able to win this game. Now, the line is set at minus three and a half, which makes me uncomfortable here. I hate that half point there. If it was three, I'd take the Cardinals to cover here. But the Panthers, folks, I just don't trust Teddy Bridgewater. And you got Mike Davis and this... Panthers defense can't stop anybody. So you know what? I'll swallow the point and a half, or I should say the half point, and give me uh, the Cardinals, excuse me, to, to cover the three and a half. Moving on to the Jaguars at the Bengals. Um, and the Bengals are favored in this matchup by three. The Jaguars, everybody's darling Gardner Minshew, wet the bed uh, last week we saw against the Dolphins on Thursday night football. And we saw the Jaguars again. Yeah, they had an impressive victory against the Colts, but maybe the Colts are more overrated than we think, and the Jaguars aren't really that good like people expected. I'm going to go with the Bengals. A lot of offensive talent. Joe Burrows looked good in this um, uh, in his career so far, so give me the Bengals to win here. They just have more talent, and both defenses are bad here. Um, the line is minus three in favor of the Bengals. I think I'm going to take the Jaguars here to cover that. It'll be a close game. Again, both teams can't stop anybody, so... Um, it'll b- probably be very close. Browns at the Cowboys. All right, minus five in favor of Dallas. And here's my first, I believe, upset. No, actually, that was not my first upset. I've picked the Bears already. But uh, I'm going to say right here, even though Dallas is favored, I'm going to go with the Cleveland Browns to win here um, straight up. And here's why. I told you guys this. The Browns have a lot of talent. They have a lot of talent. And there's no reason why they shouldn't be a playoff team this year. Well, when you take that and you combine with what they did last week, I believe last week they got a lot of confidence because they played the Washington football team and they understood what their identity is. Their identity is you run the football with Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt. You limit the amount of passes Baker Mayfield throws. You put your playmakers in position to succeed and you let your defense obviously um, go all out. And I believe that's what they're going to do. Yes, Dallas's de- offense can put up points. They can put up points for days. But Browns' defense is decent. They are. Trust me on that. And I believe they can stop this Cowboys' offense. And on the other end, the Cowboys' defense can't stop anybody. 
I believe it's going to be a heavy dose of Nick Chubb and company again. I'm going to go with the Browns here to upset the Dallas Cowboys. Cowboys to me are overrated. I'm sorry, they are. The whole NFC East is overrated. Moving on to the Minnesota Vikings at the Houston Texans. As you can tell, I've got no line here. It's an NA not available because the big news that came out of the NFL this week was the COVID test, a positive COVID test, if you will, for the Vikings. Excuse me, not the Vikings, the Titans. But uh, we've had a lot of teams that played one another, right? So uh, the, the Vikings game, and then you see right here with the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Titans game, I've also got not, uh, not available here with the line. So... Again, no line set here for both these games. So I'm just going to pick a straight-up winner. And I guess I won't count this to my record unless by game time the lines come out. Um, and so who do I have winning this matchup? And I believe I'm going to go with the Texans. Folks, both teams have been awful, 0-3. But the Texans have just been a facing a gauntlet of a schedule. You go from facing the Chiefs to the Ravens to the Steelers. Two uh, Super Bowl contenders and a playoff team, potential Super Bowl contender maybe. I got to give the Texans some slack here. They should be able to handle the Vikings, who have looked awful. The Vikings uh, on both sides of the football can't stop anybody and can't score as much as we thought they could. Give me the Texans here. I believe Deshaun Watson and the Houston Texans get their first event, win of the season. Moving on, Seattle Seahawks at the Miami Dolphins. You know this one's easy for me. Give me the Seahawks here. The only question is, do I take the six and a half? And I'm going to take the six and a half because they've got the MVP this year, Russell Wilson, hashtag let Russ cook. All right? Um, look at that here. Moving on to this side of the board here. I know it might be a little bit difficult to see, but we've got the Chargers at the Bucks here. The line is minus seven and a half in favor of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I'm going to go with the Bucs to win this game. Seven and a half feels like a little too much for me. Um, that point and a half, I hate that point and a half. You know that. I'll, I'll take the Chargers to cover here. All right. Um, again, I think the Bucs are the better team. Uh, Pittsburgh Steelers at the Tennessee Titans. Again, the same thing here. No line. Uh, but uh, both teams are 3 0, so we've got a matchup of undefeated teams. But you know how I feel about this Pittsburgh Steelers team. I believe they're legit. I picked them to make the playoffs this year. Give me the Steelers to win this game straight up. All right. And then we've got the Baltimore Ravens at the Washington football team. And I'm going to tell you right now, folks, free money is on the money line here for the Ravens. We know that it's not going to pay out much, but you you know they're going to absolutely throttle the Washington football team because of what happened against the Chiefs and they got embarrassed. And so that's a fat spread here, uh, minus 13 and a half. And you guys know I hate swallowing points, but I might just consider doing this. And you know what? I'm just going to do it. Take the damn points because the Ravens might just steamroll the Washington football team by like three, four touchdowns after what happened with the Chiefs. I mean, they are going to be pissed off. And the Washington football team's awful. We know that. So I'm going to do it. I'll swallow the points. All right, moving on. Giants at the Rams. Minus 12 and a half in favor of the Rams. That's a big number. Again, we just talked about me and how much I hate swallowing points. Uh, but we take a look at the Giants. I expected them to cover that big spread last week against the 49ers. They didn't do that. This week they go up against the Rams here. You know I have the Rams winning this game. That's not a problem. But it's in terms of who I believe, uh, whether I believe the Giants will cover here. And folks, again, they have not they have not shown me enough here. So I'll go ahead and just pick the Rams to cover this spread. All right, uh, New England Patriots at the Kansas City Chiefs, minus seven in, seven in favor of the Chiefs, and you know I'm going with the Chiefs here. They're just a better team, and I think they can um, uh, cover this by seven uh, because the Patriots, we all know, uh, obviously with Bill Belichick, he's going to try to design a, a game plan to stop um, Patrick Mahomes, but again, you can't really stop Patrick Mahomes. You can only hope to slow him down here, and I'm not betting against Patty Mahomes, especially when the Patriots have Cam Newton now instead of Tom Brady. So give me the Kansas City Chiefs and give me them to cover here. Minus seven. Moving on to the Bills at the Raiders. Um, minus three in favor of Buffalo. And the Bills have looked good. They have looked good. Josh Allen has uh, looked good. But they have had a bit of an easy schedule here. Um, again, my mind says go with Buffalo here. But I some, for some reason, I smell an upset here. We saw what the Raiders did. Uh, to the Saints 
um, you know, the other day, uh, the other week, I should say, I think the Raiders can pull this off. I don't know if I'm willing to put my money where my mouth is. And you know what? I'll probably just pick the Bills here, but I am definitely going to take the Raiders to cover because I believe, again, the Raiders are that team you don't want to look past, and I believe the Bills might try to do that. All right, Philly and San Fran, minus seven in favor of um, the 49ers. I'm just not sure about this game because we've got a lot of injuries here. Uh, but honestly, folks, I think the 49ers win this game. I expect Philly to cover here. They've looked awful, but 49ers, again, they're missing a lot of bodies. All right, uh, and then finally, on Monday Night Football, we've got the Falcons at the Packers here. I'll take the Packers to win. Minus seven and a half. Give me the Falcons to cover that. Falcons have been losing because they've been blowing leads. So, you know, they can keep up. It's just that they can't win. So, that's why I'm taking the Falcons to cover here. So, there you have it. My picks and predictions for week four of the NFL season. Uh, let's, again, just go through real quick and see who I feel very confident in. I think I do feel pretty confident in, in this matchup here with the Falcons and the Packers. You can probably, um, you know... Feel confident taking Atlanta to cover there. Um, I think I feel, I don't know if I feel very confident here. Again, money line for this one. Ravens, Washington football team, feel pretty confident. Seattle, Miami. Um, and then when we take a look at the other, the other ones, I love, you know, the Bears upset here over the Colts. I definitely try to try to get into that. And I, and I like the Jets here over the, the Broncos. So, again... Tough, tough week here in terms of the games, but that's what I like. So let me know what you guys think. Leave a comment down below if you agree or disagree. As always, thanks for watching.